Long and merry ago in Scotland there lived, in the Clachan of Kintail, on the shores of Loch Duich, a carpenter and his name was Willie. He'd do a bit fishing when the carpentry was slack and he had a wee boat. He had the boat hauled up for repairs one morning and looking her over he decided to replace the forepart of the bow. It was all worn away. He looked in his woodshed but found nothing to suit. He knew he'd get nothing in the way of driftwood along the beach that day, so off he went to the firwoods and the pines along the slopes of the hills above, and he searched and searched to see could he find a bit wood grow in the right shape, or better, a bit of fallen wood as long as it wasn't rutted. But no, he couldn't find anything at all. He wandered and he strayed and he strayed and he wandered till as dusk was falling he came out the far of the woods and part of the country very remote and unfrequented. He was surprised to see a wee light winking across the moors. They'd never heard of a house up there, but he thought he'd go and see could he get some shelters. The night was coming on wet. Well, he made his way towards this light, and it was a neat wee house where he knocked on the door. Out came the ugliest old hag ever seen. Her nose thought the better of meeting her chin, and a pair of her teeth made the twist out of her mouth like tusks on her. And she said, I know for wet night, so it is. She had a job speaking with the teeth. You're wanting out the rain lately. <laughs> Uh, Willie never got a word in edgeways. She said, Oh, yes, come away in, come away in. You'll be hungry. You'd maybe like a dram while supper's boiling. Oh, you'd like that fine. And she settled Willie down beside the fire, talking for the two of them all the while. The door in the back of the house opened and in hobbled two more old hags, and among the three, the second was uglier than the first, and the third would sour the milk. Well, at all events, there was nothing wrong with the whiskey. The fire was warm, they gave him a good meal, and it was getting late, and one of the hags said, Oh, he'll be staying the night, she said. You'll not get back through the woods tonight, she said. And she showed him where they'd a bed he could sleep in at the back of the house. There was a big chest at the foot of the bed. Nothing else in the room at all, no pictures, nothing. Oh, there was something not canny about the place. It made Willie eerie a bit. But maybe it was the three sisters smiling at him as they closed the door. But he was tired out. He climbed in the bed closed his eyes. He'd not been long asleep when he was wakened by the creak of the door softly opened. He never moved or said a word but just peeped between two eyelashes. And what did he see but one of the old hags leaning over the foot of his bed? She opened the lid of the chest, reached in and pulled out a wee red hat. She put it on her head. She stood on her right leg, put her right hand in the air, closed her right eye and called, Maxty, Maxty, here's off to London. Whoosh. She vanished. Next comes in the second old hag, pulls out a red hat, puts it on, says the words, Whoosh. and off to London with her. Whoosh. And so the third also. Well, he thinks to himself, Oh, I've always wanted to voyage to foreign parts, and this would be cheaper than the train. He got up and looked in the chest. Sure enough, there's another red hat there. He put it on his head, stood in his right leg, stuck his right hand in the air, closed his right eye and called out, Mixty Maxty, here's off to London. This was the days before rhyming spells were invented, you see. He was whirled through the air and landed in London outside a pub. It was called the Traveller's Rest. He went inside. Who should he see there but the three old sisters sitting drinking triple whiskies off his small measures in London? Come away and sit you down, Willie. Have a glass of whiskey. Oh, we didn't mean to wake again. <laughs> Willie took a glass, he was thinking to himself. Oh, this is grand, grand. This is just fine. Everything was fine. The whiskey was flowing like water. The hours took wings. He got up for a minute to stretch his legs just. And when he turned around, there was the last of the sisters, standing on her left leg, left hand up, left eye shut, bawling out, Mac! Mixty, mixty, he is back to Kintail. A heavy hand fell on Willie's shoulder, and the landlord said, Excuse me, sir, if you're about to take your leave, there's a matter of a £246 bill to pay. Oh, I haven't got any money. What? No money? Herbert, ring for the law. Right, Frank, I will. Now, at that time, you could incur a fence by not paying £246 bills right enough, but when Willie began to explain how he can't be there at all, that was the pink limit. With such a hare-brained story, they thought he must be hiding something else, and they decided to hang him just in case. The day was set for his execution. They took him to the gallows. He was stood there on the card. 
The hangman put the rope round his neck, settled it snugly under his ear and said, Any last requests, mate? Oh, would you mind if I just put on my hat, said Woody. I wouldn't like to come down with the flu, do you see? They thought no harm in that. Untied his hands for a minute so he could get it out of his pocket. He put the red hat on his head, stood on his left leg, put his left hand up, left eye shut, called, Baxty Mixty, here's Baxter and tail. He found himself outside his own front door. The rope was still round his neck, and the whole arm of the gallows tree still attached to it, and do you know, it proved to be the very bit of wood he'd been needing for his boat. Thank you.